this next story, let me tell you, it's it's full of emotion. I think it's affecting a lot of people right now. If you're on social media, uh, I think at some point you definitely have experienced an emotional response because the controversy is brewing over one reporter's Twitter post in the hours following the news of Kobe's death. So a Washington Post political reporter tweeted out a link to this 2016 Daily Beast article with the headline, Kobe Bryant's disturbing rape case, the DNA evidence, the accuser's story, and the half confession. Well, the Washington Post placed the reporter on administrative leave, saying her tweets displayed poor judgment that undermined the work of her colleagues. But now there are growing criticisms of the paper, with some saying they should have protected the journalist. The question is, was it right to tweet about a 2003 rape allegation in the hours after Kobe's death? And should the paper have suspended her? And let me tell you, I was looking through all the responses and comments today, Lindsay, and social media is, I've never seen such inflamed, heightened emotion. People protecting Kobe, other people saying, why can't we have a complicated, nuanced conversation about someone if they do believe it? It's true or even just bringing it up without being suspended from your job. How do we handle this? Well, I'm looking at the journalist Felicia, and she is somebody who has gone through sexual assault herself. And she said that in the Washington Post. She released an article a couple of years ago detailing her experience. So, as a journalist, which is not what we do, we are a talk show with opinion. But you were, a and I was a journalist for ten, for 10, years, 10 years prior to taking this to job. Said. So, as a journalist, it's our job to objectively report the news. I know that that would be tough if you're someone who survived sexual assault. But when I'm looking at this story, she didn't give the story any context, and she got upset that she was being attacked on Twitter for tweeting a link that basically was condemning. Kobe's character and accusing him of rape. But I think her job as a journalist was to put that in context. You have the responsibility and you need to have the journalistic acumen to write the full story. Go to the Washington Post and say, this man is a nuanced character. This man has a detailed, layered history that we need to discuss. But don't just tweet that out and be the political reporter for the Washington Post and tweet that and leave it there. Because you're leaving yourself open to the attacks that you're now receiving. And so whether or not she should be fired, you know, I think that she should be put on leave like she was. I think it's inappropriate because we're in a time where we don't know what journalism is, is anymore. We have our president that attacks journalists. We have TMZ that broke the news to Vanessa Bryant that her husband passed away. You know, what are we doing now that we need to look at ourselves, people who call themselves journalists? We have journalists attacking a seven-year-old child, which is Blue Ivy, and we look at them calling out her characteristics. We need to do better altogether as journalists. And I look at this woman and I say, it was your responsibility just to do better and give it more time than two hours after the man passes away to say what you think about him if it's negative. And you know, don't hide behind somebody else's article. I, I stand behind a journalist named Jillian Sheldon. She sat at that Kobe trial for six weeks. She followed it in Colorado, in and out, stayed there, interviewed all the lawyers, interviewed the woman who was accusing him. And she said, how can we use someone's worst day on this earth as a referendum in the, on their character in totality? And we can't, because just like Kobe, we all have flaws and we're all layered individuals. And we've seen this story time and time again, too many times when it's a black man and a white woman that's an accuser, when that's the story and it goes down and he just goes and gets convicted by the public jury. And we've seen the story too many times where women who are who have been sexually assaulted cannot give their voice to the public and give are not given the space they need to share their story. So this is a complicated thing to talk about, but I really think that as a journalist, if you're going to take that name and that stance and that dignity of a position, you should probably do it properly and just try to tell the complicated story with as much care as possible. And that goes for everybody involved in this Kobe situation. Wow. Well, well said. said. I know I want to well give you a said. round of applause too. I, I, I hope everybody out there that's having this argument right now on Twitter, because I see it brewing and I see such vitriol and I get it because of the beloved man that Kobe is and I stand with you. But I hope that they can all somehow, we can clip what you just said and everybody hear it because I think there's a responsibility that was lost and you could not have said it in a more eloquent and passionate way. And we just can all just have a little bit more empathy. I mean, for the family, for, the, for everybody involved, the seven people or nine people lost their lives. Just have a little bit more empathy, whether you're the outlet trying to be first or the outlets that were completely wrong, saying that his whole family was on the plane. Have some empathy for other people. You know, people lost their lives. And so we have to just step back and remember that, you know, this man was a legacy and a legend for so many people. He's also a complicated human, but we cannot just assassinate his character when he's dead and can't even defend himself. We just have to do better. That was Amen. Really Thank you, Lindsey Granger. Well Thank you.